Welcome to Real Talk Jamaica, where we dive deep into the heart of the island, uncovering the stories that matters the most. I'm your host, Kiwana Harris. We're about to embark on a journey of candid conversations, raw truths, and unfiltered insights. Grab your seats and get comfortable. This is Fix Up Yourself. Welcome to Fix Up Yourself. Today I have with me Dr. Kurt Jones to give us some tricks and tips about how to fix up for health. So, welcome Dr. Kurt Jones. Thank you, thank you, I appreciate it. Well, Dr. Jones, before we go into the tips and tricks, I would like to know a little bit about you. And I think my viewers would want to know some things about you too. I want to know how you got into medicine. Did medicine choose you or you chose medicine? What's going on with that now, doctor? Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> a question like that, uh, where to slide? Um, I never ever thought I wanted to be a doctor initially. I was just a good student. You know, okay. um, just trying to figure it out. Day by day, want, just wanted to get good grades and be a good student. Mm -hmm. um, it was between law and medicine. Chose medicine because I wanted, uh, I'm just a lover of knowledge. Okay. So anything that really gives me like additional insight, things that I feel like I know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. I understand, I wouldn't naturally have an inclination for it. Okay. So I uh, tried it out, started liking it. A bit difficult, tedious, wanted to analyze, but then, you know, made it out. Um... Now, as a medical doctor, you know, what we're trying to do now is try to create an effect on something that should have a meaning to you if you're doing it. And uh, as such, now we find ourselves not just working as a primary physician or a medical practitioner, but we're trying to, you know, revolutionize medicine. Okay. And so, mm -hmm. you know, as such, I'm now a CEO of um, Comfort Medical Services. Okay. Yeah, what we're doing is we are bringing healthcare solutions to your doorsteps. Wherever you are, we want to make sure you're getting comprehensive healthcare, you know, at the most affordable cost. Um, started during COVID because COVID really highlighted, you know, a few flaws, a few, you know, inadequacies. Also, it highlighted some good strengths that we can work with. Okay. With the healthcare system. Right. Around. And as such, you know, intention was to try to bridge the gaps. And that's where we came up. That's how we came about. But before you go into comfy uh -huh. home care service, uh -huh. I want to know some more about yeah. you. Okay. Yes. So, no what school did you attend? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I'm from Montego Bay. Saint Montego Bay. Yeah, I okay. went to Cornwall College. Cornwall College. Yeah. Yes, man. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't say... All right, so, my type of upbringing, not necessarily from the upper class, not necessarily from the you know, impoverished setting either. Right. But so, we're going to say in the middle? Lower middle, but <laughs> okay. okay, yeah, that's how I differentiate middle class, lower upper. Okay, like, okay, so it was lower middle class, but a certain level of um, I should say, I think it, it gives a little bit more strength, a little bit more steel. So it, it adds to your character, builds you, allows you to figure out your strengths, add to your strengths, you know, as such. Right, I think I came out quite all right. I think you came out <laughs> quite all right. I think your mother is proud. I hope so. All right, yeah. so. Give us a backdrop now about medical school. You said you liked learning. So mm -hmm. that was one of the things that pushed you into medicine, yeah. right? Yeah. So give us a backdrop. Give us how medical school was for you, how the journey at medical school was. Yeah. What did you specialize in? Things mm -hmm. like that. So I'll tell you straight up. My first, 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 first semester in med school, I feel like the most important course is because... I think what happened at the time was I was so happy because the right. journey to get to med school was extremely rough. Right. You know, mm -hmm. given the setting the time coming from. So I was just so happy and somehow I kind of felt as if we finally reached. Oh, so, so I, I dropped my guards. So, oh, so you laid yeah, back, you yeah, got laid back. Yeah, yeah. I dropped mm -hmm. my guards, feel the most important course. I never forget. And then when I heard that, listen, if you mess up the next semester, you're out. You know, so given, you know, just appreciating everything, the journey where I'm coming from, everything I said, you know, okay, I love this happen to me. Right. So, repositioned myself. First year, I actually ended up with a very good GPA. Mm -hmm. um, afterwards, I decided that, listen, never want to anything again. Right. Um, five years I'm in school, have it ups and downs. I think my clinical years, we actually start, you know, what I call it, interning sure. and doctors, mm -hmm. and looking at doctors and trying to learn from them and stuff. I look a bit more tedious. 
because now you're actually having to apply what you're learning. Learn now, they're yeah. putting the theory into practice yeah. now. So you're looking at a person, it's not just black and white again. Right. You know, you're learning to treat a patient as a person, and it's not just black and white, but it's an actual, you know. Someone yeah. is a human being right. now. And you're learning nothing is exactly as it is. Right. See, when you get to appreciate that, you know, your medicine kind of, I should say, is augmented, it takes a step further. Right. All right. Um, finished med school 2020. Um, so naturally, I go say, boy, my young man as a doctor, which mm -hmm. is true. I only have four years of experience, I swear. Right. Finished school med, uh, med school 2020. Was at Crown Regional Hospital as a, um, that's where I did most of the training, internship, and as I say, she was mm -hmm. in the office. Rotated through mostly surgical specialties. Okay. So it was mostly a neurosurgery, plastic surgery, you know, general surgery. Those, I think I'm more of a surgically oriented person. Have I specialized as yet in any of them? No, not yet. Okay. But uh, as it stands, now, I'm a primary care physician. A primary care you physician. Know. But I want to specialize in plastic surgery, you know, because when I need it, <laughs> I can call on you, of all course. right? Of mm -hmm. course. So I specialize in plastic surgery. You know yeah. me a search a doctor? Mm -hmm. I want me one doctor for my friend mm -hmm. that's a plastic surgeon. So when I need it, yeah. I can call on you. So that's... Specialize in it, that. Well, you, know, you know, the funny thing is people think plastic surgery is just the cosmetic aspect. I know, but it's the cosmetic aspect I am talking. <laughs> All right? <laughs> so, right. So, um, mm -hmm. so you said um, you were resident at Cornwall Regional Hospital. Yes. You know what I want to find out from you? How were you perceived, though? Because mm -hmm. being a young doctor, you look young and mm -hmm. you are young. How were you perceived by patients mm -hmm. and your fellow doctors and nurses there. I could ask you the same question. You know why? Because I'm sure probably feel similar with that guy, my doctor. Yes, because I'm, I'm not going to lie. When <laughs> yeah, I yeah. saw you first, I said, I am my doctor. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm my doctor. But then to me, though, I appreciate it. I have no problem with that because to me, that's my grab. Right. That's so, that what's yeah. carried attention yeah. to you. So, okay. So when I get the grab now, it's for me to show you why I'm a doctor. Okay. You know, understand? Mm -hmm. And when I get the opportunity now, it's, I don't say what all right, good, and then yeah. you, you just say, yeah, see there? See there, you would know what your problem. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. No? I'm sure, yeah. yeah. I'm going to see you next week again, true? Mm -hmm. Nice. <laughs> so, yeah. the, so the doctors yeah. and nurses, they openly accepted you? Yeah, man, because it's not even just about the look. It's about the character. Right, you know, right. right. I'm, mm -hmm. a, I'm a sociable person, very funny. As I said, very comedic as well. You know? Right. And I just have a good energy around me, mm -hmm. so people kind of take to me. Um very, I have a very serious work ethic though, regardless, because to me, you day have to work, work day have to do. Work have to get done. All right, then I like that mentality. Yeah, that, no, that is a must. Mm -hmm. One of my doctors well, used to train me when I say, you will kill people who are different, you know, just not have time for pokes. Okay, okay. Yeah, so if you have time for waste, you no. Know, right, but that but that's, has been my approach to everything over all though. I think it helped me to even be an a entrepreneur too, as a doctor. Because that type of mentality is like you realize that there's something to be done, you have the solution, you try to get it done. Right. Yeah. But a lot of young persons don't look at things like that. You, know? you said mm -hmm. you have that mentality, you have that work ethics. When you look in the communities or in the wider aspect of young persons mm -hmm. within your age group, yeah. you don't really see that a lot, you know? No. You don't see that a lot. Mm -hmm. Because most young people, they want the microwave. Effect. Effect, yeah. you know, put the team, take it out, and it's done. Mm -hmm. But a lot of them are not willing to go all the way, put in the work, and get the job done. What would you say to, uh, to some of them? I agree with you. That that's what's, what I'd say to the youth is that there's nothing wrong with that, actually, you know. Because the truth is, if you're coming from a background where you've never had, never had, never had, mm -hmm. at some point in time, you're going to have, you're going to have, you're going to have. Right, that but, is true. But there has to be an appreciation of a time. Time is a very important thing, and a master of time is a master is, has knows no bounds. Right. You understand timing. The, the you understand the concept of timing. You know, for me, for example, I've had to differentiate the importance from being financially okay, from having a passion project. Okay. 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 A, a passion project is a long term thing. Mm -hmm. You understand? Say, time will take forget it where you want it. Right. Right. Money. You can always work to get money. Right. You okay, understand? Um, so what I'd say to any youth is learn to differentiate the two. Find what is your passion. Understand say it's not going to be everything right away. 
But at the same time, if you need money now, there's a way to go and make money. Just go and work. You ain't going to work. Mm-hmm. But nobody's scam. I don't know. I'm nothing to say. I'm not like to any. <laughs> yes, so, yeah. But, yes, um, Dr. Kirk Jones. I want to say the Dr. Kirk Jones, and I don't want to just say Kirk or mm-hmm. so. I want everyone to know that you are actually a I'm medical so doctor. We know about you. We want to say, say, we want to say yeah. Dr. Kurt Jones. Yes. Right, right. So you you stated that you were at Cornwall Regional Hospital. Give me a memorable moment that happened at Cornwall Regional Hospital with you. Memorable. Different memorable as in fun? Like it, whether it's fun, mm-hmm. whether, it was, whether you were scared, you didn't know what to do, mm-hmm. but something that really stand out in your mind. Yeah. Um... Having to, when I was on neurosurgery, having to run a patient from E&E directly into surgery at Falmouth Hospital. Mm-hmm. So the, the thing is that there's a bit of a disconnect. There, as I said to you, there are some inefficiencies here and there in every system. Right. You know, but it was the, the need to get a 16-year-old boy who met in an accident, um, bike accident actually, in need of immediate um, um, brain surgery. I to, you know, I don't use the big terms. I tell you, so how do my thing, the big terms, you know, make sense. I'm not talking to people who know medicine. Right. But the thing is, blood on the brain, you need to get it off of the brain. Right. You understand? So it was something that was very time sensitive to. Um, I think my consultant was not there as yet, but he had to get the farm out. It was my job to get the patient from Conrigional, which is Montego Bay, mm-hmm. to Falmouth. To Falmouth. With limited ambulances available. Um, but at the same time, you have to try to maintain the patient as best as you can right. without him deteriorating. Mm-hmm. That in itself, kind of, you can either fold as a doctor in terms of you can either succumb and just get caught up in the whole rush and the craziness and everybody up and down and whatever it is. Right. Or you can just maintain your composure and understand that you're the doctor here. And everybody's looking to you for answers. Mm-hmm. You understand? Even if you don't have the answers, you have to come up with something that makes sense. Right. right. Um, at that time, however, because of the person that I am, I was able to work out an ambulance. Um, even despite having the shortage, um, there was a nurse shortage as well. So I had to go myself with the patient, you know, bag in the patient, oxygen, everything, mm-hmm. reach the farm out. Had to jump straight from ambulance to changing into clothes to go into surgery. The doctor was already there, so you had to organize everything from talking to anesthetic doctors, organizing um, surgery room availability, getting the ambulance, getting the nurse to come assist, everything. So you were doing everything? All of that until I got to OT in Farmont with the consultant to get the surgery done. Yeah. So that's what I said to you is that it builds your heart breaks in. And, uh, the mentality that I have as a person, I said to you before, is what they have to get it done. Mm-hmm. So it never really phased me. It's just need to tick on my list, get it done. You know, you know what I've always wondered um, with doctors, mm-hmm. when you lose a patient, like you, have you ever lost a patient? Yes, I, yes. all right. Your first one, tell mm-hmm. me about how that made you feel, how it impacted you as a doctor. I mean, doctors kind of get a little numb to certain things over a certain period. Right. But it, this was your first like, patient, yeah, the, the first, per- the first person one, the, you are... Yeah, for yeah. sure. The first one, you start to question what you could have done better. What could I have done? But when you realize that you think you do as much as you can, right. and there's nothing more that you can do, mm-hmm. you know, it's just the acceptance that is a little bit difficult after. Okay. But after that, you get better. Okay, yeah. so your first patient that you lost, it, it didn't let you like think back. And you said that you yeah, started yeah. to look back and say, well, well you, you could have done different better, right. or so. Yeah, it just make mm-hmm. you overanalyze. Okay. You really overanalyze. All right. But then you realize, as I said, as you, you know, as you progress along, you know, you recognize that it's not just about what you can do better, but you have to also learn to accept that you did what you can do within the time span with what resources you had and mm-hmm. what capabilities at the time. Okay, okay. So as a doctor now, losing patients is like you get numb to it now? It's not to say, uh, I don't want to say, um, I, don't want it, I don't want it to seem as if I don't have any connection in it at all. No, that's right. not the case. Right. But you, you're mature enough to understand that these things happen and regardless, you want to know that you put measures in place to prevent 
anything that is preventable the next time. Okay. Yeah. You know what, Dr. Jones, let us jump into tics, tips and tricks now. Yeah. Because you have shown our viewers that, yes, you are knowledgeable mm -hmm. and you know what you're talking about. Of course. Right? So, you know Monique, the comedian Monique, she was on our live. Mm -hmm. And she was talking about some issues that she was having. And someone said to her she should check her thyroids. When she did check it, it was really in balance. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of Jamaicans really don't know much about the thyroid glands. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you could shed some light on it for us and tell yeah. us if it's in balance, what will happen, and how mm -hmm. can we prevent things like this. Yeah. So the, the thyroid gland is actually a, a lobular gland, meaning it has two lobes. It's in the neck. Right. Right. Now, the truth of the matter is the importance of the thyroid is it secretes substances mm -hmm. or hormones. Hormones, right. And these hormones kind of help keep things in balance, basically, if you get what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Now, with any hormonal system in the body, it can either over-function or under-function or function quite normally. Right. One out of the three. Okay. Now, oftentimes, there are signs and symptoms that you look out for. The truth is, some of these are being undiagnosed or underdiagnosed, especially patients with thyroid disorders. Mm -hmm. um, most times, and, and as I said to you, yeah, so the word when you're overperforming, it's hyper. And you're under, it's hypo. Okay. Right? When it's hyper, there's a few things that you look out for. So it affects all systems. Because it's hormonal. Right. So let's start from, let's say, generally speaking, it can affect your hair, it can affect your heart, it can have shortness of breath, your heart can be beating more than faster than usual, it can have fidgeting, it can get easily tired, stuff like that. It okay. can be it can be extremely thin, losing weight, the quality of your nails can change. So it's a multi systemic thing as I mentioned before. High po on the other side is the opposite. Mm -hmm. So it's underperformance, you gain weight instead of lose weight. Okay. And that has overactive with hyper. So you're much, 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 much more fatigued and easily tired. Some people will say, boy, the tiredness feel like you want to sleep away. You understand that's how they describe it. But um, what I'd say to my patients is, the truth is you want to be as thorough as possible. Um, every year I say to my patients, even if you think you're in the best state of health, there's nothing wrong with doing another checkup. Okay. All right. Um, I realize it's, I don't know if it's a culture thing for, for developing countries, but we're not so open to wanting to do preventative care. We want to do curative care. So right. When things go bad, we want mm -hmm. to fix it. Yeah. So it's not until the hand drop off. Right. We decide to say, oh, I can put it back on. It's true. So when I tell us that the hand can't go back on now, oh, all is lost. Right. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. So, so persons with thyroid problem, can they inherit this problem or yes. it is developed? So some are inherited, others are acquired. Okay, okay. So inherited meaning something within the gene works or the gene lane or DNA work up. Right. So you have familial things meaning passed on from one family member to, to the next. Right. right. Mm -hmm. um, for example, I don't know, I use big words, but I'll tell you. For example, Hashimoto's is something not so common, but quite common in, in female population as opposed to men. Passed along that type of... Uh, well, yes, say. but you have to tell us mm -hmm. what is Hashimoto's. So it's, it's just information in your thyroid. And okay. at the same time, it's, it's a specific type of one where it doesn't, the body doesn't recognize it as being your own. So it attacks it. Okay, okay. It attacks it, kills it, it under functions. And therefore, okay. this is high O. Mm -hmm. You understand? So it's just, it's just different types of diseases that can take place. And really and truly, it's just about, you know, either it over functioning or under functioning. Some are, are familiar, which can be passed along. Others are along the line of acquired. Okay. Right. Or would someone acquire a th um, thyroid problem? Right. So radiation exposure is one. Okay, right. okay. Um, if it is that you are, what I should say, some people eventually get in, let's say, spread of certain cancers from one place to the next, can affect the gland. Um, iodine exposure, an increased iodine exposure as well as well. Mm -hmm. um, those are just a few to name. But off the top of my head, those are I remember for sure now. But these are quite a, a list of causes. Can it be controlled though? Of course. It's not the end of the world if you're diagnosed with hypo or hyperthyroidism. 
if you are diagnosed with hypo, you get medications to bring up the level of the functioning. If it's hyper, then we can offer you other solutions that may be surgical as well. Okay, so what about foods? You know, we always want to see what we can eat instead of what the medication. Mm-hmm. So is there um, foods that will help to bring up or bring down your thyroid problem? No, not, mm-hmm. it's not a dieting thing. Really. Okay. No, it's okay. more along the lines of taking your medications, oh. you know, keeping fit. Well, when you say foods, mm-hmm. you want to say a lifestyle aspect of things. Okay. For example, right. let's say you're hypothyroid. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, that means you're putting on weight. Right. So can you imagine putting on weight and then going to eat? Junk food. Yeah, and then you're putting on additional weight. It just right. makes things worse. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So in that sense, yes, indirectly. But it doesn't necessarily affect the, the, the pure functioning of the thyroid gland, if you know what I'm saying. Yes, I understand yeah. what you're saying. I understand. So, so you would tell persons to... Right. Really keep have fit, a keep fit good, right? Well, right, you know, mm-hmm. and enjoy life. Quality of life is also yes. Important. Enjoy the mm. quality of life. Mm. You know, we as Jamaicans, we would, as you said before, you mentioned earlier that we wait on th- till things yeah. are dropping off, exactly, pop off or whatever before we really consider to go to the doctor. And I find this mostly in men. The other day we had. Um, we had an episode where we were talking to men about their mental health, and they mentioned it that they not like for a doctor. You understand? Mm-hmm. But we know that prostate cancer is on a rise in Jamaica, and we also realize that diabetes too is on a rise in Jamaica mm-hmm. within the male population. Right. What advice would you give to our? male population out there Mm -hmm. on prostate first and then we're going to touch on diabetes right i mean it's a culture thing it's a a culture thing um i'm not bashing anybody first because culture is culture it's It's who we are um first thing first yes men are a bit more apprehensive to certain things um however it doesn't mean that we're not open to it but there's a fear factor in place. Right, you right, understand? yes. I, I think I wanted, I want, I was curious to launch a research recently to ask what phase of seeing a doctor is the most scary for you. Yeah, maybe we is need it, to do some yeah. form of research and, and see what yeah, is that. Yeah. yeah, is it is it the diagnosis that you're worrying about? Is it you're worrying about the treatment? What What is it that you're worrying about? Is it just the doctor's demeanor? What are you, what are you worrying about? You understand? Right. I think if you tackle it from this, sir, then it's way, way better. Mm-hmm. But... My advice to Jamaicans overall, not just men overall, right? but first thing first is you have to understand that as you're getting older, your body is naturally deteriorating. Right. right? It's something that you can't avoid. Mm-hmm. We, we, we've all been given a certain amount of number of years. It's true. Right? Mm-hmm. What you can do to, to maximize on the quantity of life is to try to prevent things from happening unnecessary things. Right. If it is that you have familial traits for certain things, start going to your doctor from early and saying this so that you can do the proper screening. Right? To detect early onset so that measures can be put in place to further give you quality and better quantity of life. Right. Um, Diabetes and all these other long-term illnesses are mostly lifestyle-induced illnesses. It's true. Not just for men, but what we are taking on as a culture, we are trying to be very Americanized. <laughs> you understand? What, yes. what we're doing is now we're trying to be the quick, fast access to everything. So the fast foods, the Popeyes, the all of them, the whole work up, the whole line, you know what I'm talking yes. about. Mm-hmm. Instead of going and eating a, a balanced meal that we used to, with you know, our greens and our this and the, that and it. Right, nice and right. Balanced out, everybody wants to get a burger. It's true. Everybody wants to get a sandwich. Everybody wants to get some fries here and there, a soft soda. You know, let's grab a beer here. Let's grab that. Let's do that. You know? And we're making it perfectly okay to do that because you want to look like America. So, uh, or, or, it's, or it's the ease of getting it. Because some persons really is just like, yes, yeah, one fast food joint yeah. out there. So it's easier than to go and to fix. Uh, that would um, be the easiest one. Mm-hmm. Yes. But, but then ask yourself, why is it that um, we're having an earlier onset of these lifestyle illnesses now right. in terms of age as opposed to 
our mothers Lit. and fathers. Right, true. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We have now 30 year olds being diagnosed with hypertension and diabetes. That is so true. And even younger, yeah. even, even younger. younger. That is so true. Understand. That is so true. I've never, my mom spoke to me and I mean, I've never heard of anybody getting lung cancer till them in them 60s. Old person. Yeah, that's And it's like nowadays the younger people. Uh, as cancer. Um, we were talking mm -hmm. some time back and a friend of mine was saying, if, if we're going to say um, young people get old people disease yes. now. So it's, it's, I think, yeah, you do have yeah. a point there. Yeah, you do yeah, have yeah. a point. Yeah, that's what's happening. So what I'd say to them overall is, listen, you have to be careful. You have to understand that, listen, we're just flesh and blood. And we want to live a particular way. We're probably learning to create a balance between everything is good. Mm -hmm. I'm saying to you, cut out your burgers. I'm right, saying that. Right. But you can't get a big burger every day. Every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's that. true. It's true. You're talking, yeah. Doc. So create a balance. Mm -hmm. Establish a balance. Try to keep yourself fit, healthy. I mean, yes, yeah. why, why would a 30 year old male be so extremely obese unless you have an underlying illness? You understand? Mm -hmm. Why would I? And then the next thing is, you no, know, in a modern world where you have ladies. I don't know, having a misconception between thick and fat. You know, if you if mm -hmm. tell a lady she's obese, she's offended. But obesity is a medical diagnosis. Right. You understand? And it puts that additional risk for these lifestyle illnesses. You know, as they touch on ob um, obesity, I really would mm -hmm. want you to let us go a little bit more in, ob in obesity, meaning mm -hmm. that what are some of the symptoms? Because you said some women think they don't know to, that, to differentiate between mm -hmm. thick and fat. Yeah. What are some of the signs of obesity? Obesity? Mm -hmm. so, that we, you can look mm -hmm. and say, no man, this is not. We know of being mm -hmm. big mm -hmm. is one, but what are other signs that we can so, look so for? So you have central obesity mm -hmm. and, and you know, morbid obesity. Central obesity means within the, the abdominal area. Okay, okay, you understand? okay, okay. So yes. all of a sudden now, your belly is, is significantly growing in size. You understand? You have a significant change in weight. When we say significant, I mean over a, a month's period, a month to a month and a half, you realize that you're jumping how much? 10 pounds, 15 pounds on. Then you must realize oh, okay. something is wrong. That is true. You understand? Mm -hmm. That must be an eye-opener for you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it doesn't necessarily mean, though, that, you know what, if you gain weight... Something is wrong with gaining weight. Right. Well, if you gain all this weight, but you're still within the normal range, then I'm not going to say to you you're obese. Mm -hmm. You're not obese. Mm -hmm. You're just thick, you're not obese. Right. There's a difference. Right. It's when you pass a particular range, that's when we say you're obese. Okay. But persons always say that when persons are obese, their skin gets a bit thicker mm -mm. or things like that. No. So that's like a, that's that's like a mis story. miscon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So all of us have different type of skins. Okay. What what type of skin texture would you utilize to say obese? Okay. You know what I'm saying? We have yeah, African because, American, yeah. mm. white people, Caucasian, Chinese, Mongolians, whatever you use, you understand? Right. Yeah. Yeah, because that was one of the things for me. And I was mm -hmm. out, I always thought that when persons gain a lot of weight, their skin will get a bit thicker and that's a sign <laughs> of obesity. How about saggy? Do you prefer that term? The skin gets saggy. I'm not saying that. I'm just mm -hmm. asking if you prefer that Well, term. I, I, I'm just saying this is what used yeah. to come to, to my mind. I'm just, mm -hmm. you know, I was I never look at saggy. I, I was thinking <laughs> if you lose weight, then your skin will get, as we want to say, saggy, we say floppy. Floppy, probably. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, but yeah, mm -hmm. if you lose a, a certain it's amount. amount of weight, yeah. yeah, yeah your skin yes. not used to that. Yeah, that's Right, true. so that's what, that's, that's true. Mm -hmm. When we look out in the general public, we notice that the, the health issues that are faced in a lot of Jamaicans are diabetes, hypertension, and in the female, there's a growing concern for polycystic ovarian syndrome within the female population. Mm -hmm. How can female, can this be prevented? That's my first question. And how can a female, like, see signs or symptoms, or would she know that she could have polycystic ovarian syndrome yeah it's not necessarily preventable okay not, not your fault to be honest okay if you have PCOS, which is what i call it mm -hmm. most times ladies present to you with having abnormal menstrual cycles right most women 
will come to the doctor initially complaining about, you know, irregular menstrual cycles, that right. they've not seen them cycles and they're concerned. After doing a, a, a pre- several pregnancy tests, they're negative. So they wonder mm-hmm. what's happening with them. Right. Um, quite often, too, they will also have something that we call hirsutism. Her I've s- never heard about that yeah. one. So, so hirsutism is, you know, a male-like feature is taking place. Okay, uh, yes, so yes, so yes. Like the chain. on the chain and stuff oh, like that. It's a little yeah. bit deeper. It shows up a little bit broader than usual. Okay, okay. Abnormal here, distribution of your chest, stuff mm. like that. Um, oh, yeah, so yeah. we've got that one there. That one is new to me. Yes. Yeah, so that one, and some women, you know, I mean, a lady is going to be all about how she looks and stuff like right. that. Right. So she will notice that. Mm-hmm. Um, some will say, well, I'm a tight for laser off here, off of this and that, whatever it is. And they come to you, or they can even complain of difficulty conceiving to infertility. Um, you do that, so doctor will just randomly say, let's do an ultrasound of the abdomen. Right, and then after doing the ultrasound, you can diagnose them along with a hormonal profile. Because obviously, everything that's taking place is an imbalance it's in hormones. Hormone, right. Right? And, 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 and an abundance of male like hormones as to why you're having all these features. And these hormones are coming from the what endocrine glands or the. It's a, right, so endocrine glands, yes, but mm-hmm. more specifically. You know, coming from your ovaries okay, and stuff okay, like that, and okay, how they're okay. produced and processed and all kind of stuff. Okay, like that. all right. Right. So, you you realize that you you, you check your hormonal um, profile, you see an imbalance taking place, and they do an ultrasound, and as the name suggests, polycystic, meaning mm-hmm. more than one cyst. Right. Right. Ovarian within the ovary, right. and it has all these symptoms as to why it's called syndrome. Mm-hmm. So you do the ultrasound. The doctor will count up them with a sit and the ultrasound and say, okay, based on this, you're di- being diagnosed as having PCOS. Okay. So that's the approach to the workup for it. Right. right? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's, that's PCOS in a nutshell. How is it treated, though? What, what, what are the treatments? What would be different for each individual? Mm, yeah, it, it depends on the severity. Because, um, it's not necessarily a treatment specific for PCOS. Right. You're forever have PCOS. The point is, if you're having abnormal menstrual cycles, mm-hmm. which is the most common complaint, you get medication set regular, regularize your, um, your periods, right. which is as a result of the hormonal imbalance that I mentioned. Um, sometimes when you have PCOS, if it's a severe type, you can have elevated blood pressures. You can start developing hypertension. You can develop diabetes. They can add what we call glucose, um, insulin resistance, okay. diabetes. Right. They can develop central obesity which is what we talked about earlier on the show. Mm-hmm. So when you start having all these things, you know, then your treatment is going to be different because now we're focusing on what? Controlling your pressures now, controlling your sugar, helping you lose weight, along with the whole thing of, you know, regularizing your period. Period, right. If you are one of those ladies where somehow you, you just feel like you can't conceive because you're trying to have PCOS, you know, get medication to help you conceive. Okay, So okay. it's not treat, we're treating PCOS we're trying to treat the symptoms and alleviate what you're going through. Okay, okay. Well, Doc, I have a friend, right? And she was diagnosed with polycystic ovarian syndrome. But what she realized is that when she ate like a lot of chicken and meat products, she noticed that um, it was more severe or she had, I don't want to say flare-ups because it's not like a flare-up mm-hmm. thing, but it was more severe. And she tried to stay away from meat, chicken, and stuff like that, and she realized that she the problem was not as severe as mm-hmm. when she ate that, used to eat those foods. Mm-hmm. So, you see, the thing is, dieting does have a role to play, mm-hmm. not in terms of reversing whatever condition you have, but yeah, a lot of these foods are processed foods, processed meals. They have things that can either worsen your hormonal state Mm-hmm. You know, I, didn't, I don't want to create any conspiracy theory, theory but I mean, some of these chick meats, what they're being prepared, you know, if they're using, they call them GDOs, right. you know, they're using hormones you know, in these meats, whatever, you don't know. A lot of these are fat oriented too. Mm-hmm. So, and we know how fat breaks down and how it can worsen certain complications, all kind of other stuff, lifestyle and new stuff. When you talk about severe, as I said earlier, if you're a person with PCOS, who somehow has the hypertension and the sugar that come along with it and all them stuff there, then eating badly, of course, are going to make things worse. Right. You understand? If you're obese, 
if you have a lot of weight, it's going to make it worse. So, yes, the dieting does have a role to play in control, but not treatment of your PCOS. Okay, so to control it and you won't have this, I always say flare up, but you know, that's a flare up, but you know, you, it will control it. Yeah, it will, to, to an extent, yes. Okay. Well, you know, it's something that has um, bothered a lot of women, even myself too, but I have had my under control for a number mm -hmm. of years now. I am okay that nice. part now. So we live in a very technological world, right? And persons love to self-diagnose themselves. Mm -hmm. Them go to Dr. Google. So can we discuss, is this harmful or is this helpful? What is it? Very that harmful in <laughs> All very, right, very, very, very harmful, harmful indeed. Right. Very harmful because the thing is, you know, and these are my most difficult patients, the ones that read, mm -hmm. they come to you and put up a fight. You understand? Because they come with the knowledge and put on their boxing gloves and they come to test you. Right. But, but really and truly, guys, you have to remember, you know, not everything that you see on social media or Google, you know, is, is gospel. The reason why I'm saying this is the doctors have the knowledge to basically look on Google, pick what is applicable to you right. as an individual mm -hmm. with its own specific needs and demands and assist you. Not saying that what's on Google is wrong, but when you go on Google, it throws a whole myriad of stuff at you. Right. And you so, don't know how to go mm -hmm. through, select, have the knowledge to say, this applies to me, this doesn't apply to me. What am I experiencing? Not just this. For example, if I've seen people who complain of sore throat come to me and say they want an HPV checkup. Because they, they want to know if they have HPV. In them throat, mm -hmm. and I'd say, why would the HPV be the first thing that come to your mind? What is HPV? Human papillomavirus mm -hmm. in the cause of that cervical cancer. Right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, then we want to. Have, but why would but why, but the first thing that come to your mind? You have a sore throat. You have a cough and cold. You get a sore throat. Right. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So you have to be very careful how you read things and how you utilize the information. If you, I'm not saying that you shouldn't read because reading gives you power. But right. if you read. You ask your doctor, Doc, I saw this. What do you think about it? Right? Instead of Doc, I'm going to say this and I'm going to with me. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yes, and you know, people them love self diagnose yeah. themselves with mm -hmm. you, you know. Me can I have several <laughs> family members that really love to self diagnose them, love for Dr. Mm. Google. Everything and everything. Google say. And Google, Google say, say yeah. Google say everything, everything, you know. So, yes, and I have your, and I get your point where you're saying that you are the doctor. You have the knowledge. And not mm -hmm. even Google, you know. Them go YouTube too, you know. Yeah. Law because, and YouTube say if you mix the green juice here. With this it, and, and with, with the With the pumpkin seed. Mm -hmm. And you're going to take off the guava leaf and mm -hmm. blend it with it. It is going to cure cancer. So, yes. <laughs> but yeah, you know, so yeah. they really do go out there and, right. and do their research and they will come back to you. And so, them say, you said them put on them gloves and yeah. they're ready, them, them ready for Yeah, man, yeah them ready for you. A big match, you put on a match, come in and back down, yeah. Of course, because you, are you go to school, you know, yeah. let them know, say, you go to school. Yeah, yeah. But disclaimer though, I have nothing against bush medicine. Mm -hmm. I just don't know bush medicine. I don't practice witchcraft now. <laughs> You understand? All right. <laughs> All right. So you don't know, practice herbal medicine. Let's not say that. bush. Let us say herbal. So he does not practice herbal medicine. I'm He's right. not an herbalist. I don't know. Right. I don't, I don't, I don't know. know it. Right. right? Mm -hmm. So if you go to Google and Google tell you, say, for mixed tomato mm -hmm. paste with pumpkin juice, you cannot ask Dr. <laughs> Dr. Dr. Jones. Dr. Jones don't know. No. All right. <laughs> Dr. Jones, mm -hmm. there is a study online. We mm -hmm. did touch on diabetes, mm -hmm. but the study spoke about stroke and diabetes being mm -hmm. the leading cause in mortality in Jamaica. What are some of the some advice that you could give our viewers out there as preventative mm -hmm. measures going forward? Right. So you have to remember, so stroke is a complication of either diabetes hypertension or cholesterol. Okay. So it's not okay. like the high cholesterol. So it's not necessarily just the arm, what you call it, the arm. Diabetes. The diabetes. Right. But yes, there's a high incidence on diabetes now. Mm-hmm. And as I said to you, remember, all these things are lifestyle-oriented. You understand? Right. So it doesn't just, just harm to you overnight. Mm-hmm. So 
there's nothing wrong if you do your yearly checkups, screening for diabetes, especially if you're known to have family members who have these illnesses. Regardless of that, if you're having particular symptoms, which I will tell you, for example, diabetes, constant or frequent urination, this, 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 this unquenchable thirst, um, you're always feeling hungry no matter what you're doing, weight loss or excessive weight gain, opportunistic infections. You're seeing all these things happening to you. You can't explain it. But what you're asking if I can do a sugar test. Right. Can I check to see if I have a sugar doc? Mm -hmm. You understand? Um, and the thing is, for those who are already diabetic, it is important to maintain the lifestyle, proper lifestyle, um, meaning you're eating well, you're cutting out the alcohol, cutting out the smoking as well. You're also um, doing the proper exercises to maintain a, an appropriate weight, right? And in addition to that, by taking your medications on time and doing this on a regular basis, being compliant and adherent to the medications, right. you will not develop the other complications such as stroke. Okay, so you, so understand? stroke is like the byproduct of, uh, of right. I get you, I get right. you, I get you. you. Get mm -hmm. So when you go stroke now, then you start thinking about many other complications that can come after. Right, right, right. right. Yes, yeah. yeah, so Dr. Jones, you have opened my eyes to a lot of things today. But in your opinion, what are some of the misconceptions your patients have about the health sector the health sector mm -hmm. that is inefficient that's one mm -hmm. that's the biggest one and a doctor waste time now not just that not only that you know but those are the two major ones we have to talk about it's not that it's inefficient guys but really and truly the health sector is laden right it is burdened what i'm saying that is can you imagine uh, we have a, a we have a, a um a medical approach where we have to go to one central place to get help so what is going, what you're going to find happening is everybody's going to rush, rush there, there for right. every mm -hmm. single issue right the, the truth is the, 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 the facilities are not capable of dealing with every single soul within that area for example i i, I am i work with the government 20 day times at the same jail health center if I'm there, I can guarantee you it's one of the major center health centers in Spanish town. You are, are going to see at least 150 people coming to the health center per day. That's you the understand? health center, right? At the stoplight? Yeah. Okay. You're going to have that number or more per day. 150? Right. To a, to, 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 to a load of how much? 10 doctors or probably 7 depending seven eight you, you, you never know if it fluctuates we're human beings some we get sick some can't come to the whatever it is it's true right you understand mm -hmm. so can you imagine that amount of doctors having to see a hundred and patients for a day it's it's, it's a it's, lot it's difficult right so it is not inefficient but you have to understand that if you have one if you have the theory of you have a central location forever it's going to always seem that way the doctors are not lazy. The doctors are being worked. I think doctors are overworked. I won't comment on that. The truth okay. of the matter is, work they have to do, work supposed to get done. That's how I look at it. Okay. Okay, okay. So you said the health sector is not inefficient. But you, it's, it's two, thing, two things. It's burden. Right. And it's up to us to find solutions. You understand? Mm -hmm. Because it, if it was inefficient, to would have popped down and stopped work a long time. Right. There are solutions, hence, come to home medical services. Right. So, what we're doing is, as mentioned, we're taking away the idea of going to a central point. We are doing decentralization of medication. Okay. Of healthcare. Right. So, we go to you. So, if you're in the peripheries, you can stay in the peripheries. I will come to you. Mm -hmm. Therefore, for those who really want to go to a central point to get care because they really need it badly, 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 you can get through in a more reasonable time. You can get the assistance that you need. It should be good. Well, tell us more about Comfy Home. Let me see it, sure, sure. Medical, medical right. service. Right. Mm -hmm. Comfy Home Medical Services is just it's a mobile medical company. Right. And what we do is we bring the healthcare solutions to wherever you are. Hence, our slogan, bringing the comfortable care solutions to your own steps. Right. Um, we offer home medical doctor visits. We offer in-home nursing, home physiotherapy, intravenous vitamin therapy. It's a very comprehensive service. 
And right now I can tell you what we've been doing is we've been we've been basically looking at patients in Kingston, St. Andrew, um, St. Catherine, and we're also in Montego Bay, St. James as well. Um, what we're doing now, which is very, very interesting, is we're making medicine, which we're, we're trying to reintroduce the idea of home doctor visits. Okay, back, back right. Because it was there about 70 yes, years in ago. Yes, back, back in the days. Yeah, the yeah. doctor him, with him big with him, gun, with him gun, case. Case. Yes, 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 it's true. And when you watch TV, all the time show, you will you. see it. It's right. true. Mm-hmm. Right, but, but what we're doing now is we're saying to you that, listen, there is a place for it, given that there is also technology available. Right? Right. And what we're also saying to you is that you can now afford it. Because back then it was difficult to afford. We're saying to you now that you can get a home visit for five thousand Jamaican dollars, and if you have insurance, you can cover some right. right okay, all. all right then. Yeah, okay. You get a home doctor visit. And you cut out the long waiting too. And you don't have to mix and mingle, as mentioned before. Um, if it is that you know, even during COVID time, people are coughs, sneeze, whatever it is. You don't have to sit down beside somebody who's doing that, and you're concerned. Right. You have the sense of privacy. You know, for ladies who may be having certain issues downstairs, or if they may be having some concern about their sexual health or men who have concerns sexual health, do not if they may have to talk them business loud and road, stay home, call us to come to you. Okay, yeah. so so comfy home medical services. Mm-hmm. This it offers a wide variety a wide of range of healthcare services. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. So. If I want to stay home and I want to do like a female executive, can I get that done? Yes, because we offer mobile um, diagnostic testing as well. Okay. As well as um, we have ambulance services. But really and truly, we have membership packages going on now. Mm-hmm. Um, it fits within your price range. We work with your, your, your budget, we work with, you know, so it's just as if you've seen an insurance agent. You understand? Mm-hmm. We work up your, your affordability. I will present to you a plan that can be really specific for you and help you. So we have a female care package you now. We get one home visit per month along with uh, unlimited telemed consults. And you also get a specific discount on home testing. They get your pop smear on your female executive. And also you get your mental status examination. Okay, I'm going to do the mental status one. No, it's but not shame. Not shame. No shame. That's what I'm going to say. So. <laughs> mm-hmm. but, and you have the same package for males also? Yes. So for males, depending, of course, on your age, if you're less than 40, you won't be doing the, the prostate test. All right. But we offer the male executive profile, um, along with, you know, the mental status checks, checking for depression, anxiety, which is very common amongst Jamaican population. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. Well, Dr. Kurt Jones, I really enjoyed our conversation. It was very educational and it was very interesting because I learned a lot. So thank you for making it Real Talk Jamaica. Yes, yes. Thank you for coming. No, thank you, I enjoyed it as well. All right. Mm-hmm. Now, guys, I just want to thank my incredible guests for coming and sharing some tips and tricks. That was the end of Fix Up Yourself. Get ready for my story. Only I, only I, only I, only I can tell my story. Can tell my story. Can tell my story. Welcome back to Real Talk Jamaica. On this week's episode, we have with us producer extraordinaire Mr. Dan Boy Foster, aka Not Change Entertainment. Well, go on, Mr. Foster. Blessings enough. Thanks for having me here. Yes, it's my pleasure to have you here. All right. But Dan Boy, you know what? What was one? You for us tell me with your background, how this all started, where you're coming from with it, everything. What us want you just level with the real talk viewers and just talk about your journey as a producer. Okay, so first me have to start off with I have to give God thanks before me for going on a story car. It's a very, you know, mm-hmm. I'm getting it still. So, usually go to Elton Park Primary School and then um, refer to our education and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. We, even got, we even get anyone in the art. We even um, get surfer ticket and award at Distinction College. So, I grew up basically in Spanish town and during the park. So, you know, I'm near Corville. Whole Kingston 20. So I'm growing up 
we're going to school. High school was Inzul High School. Okay. So that the music from school days. Basically, I was an artist. So me and Johnny, DJ, record, and all those stuff. And we do interview, we go up and um, you did have um, the name again, RGR, Road Invasion, something like that, yeah. mm-hmm. where you go up and bust the artist, the men will perform at different, different places. And for you to go to school and everything, it does have a buzz, it does have good. But we never have no management, we never have no guidance. With nobody where I structure the thing and I push with. So, we still are doing music till we reach our point where we have to just go in a real world and find a job, maintain ourselves. So, you know, after a period of time, you know, so mm-hmm. the drive for music kind of cut down. They yeah, kind of just level down because where you said the real world are leaking now, bills yeah. have to pay, things like that. Yeah, you know, you have to take care of yourself. As mm-hmm. you know. So, as time goes by, you know, the drive kind of died down a little bit until um, we just realized that I did, I just work where I work, get things together, make sure so comfortable and everything because it, if, if it happened, it had happened. So I have to just pause that and just wind up where I have to look at mm-hmm. life goes on. So they are doing the park, always they are the defend them. From what music, see me. I never left it out still now. Never right. chance to mm-hmm. that again. Always a problem with myself. Always a big up my name and all of them something. I'm usually go to school. I'm usually call me Hinzo Bass. Okay. Yeah. So the name come off high school and we put bass on it. And struck tight and every school where we go, always have a look for me. People always have a drive for listen to music and them something that but as I'm so we never have the push, we never have the guidance. So that for us leave out of that energy if you look a bit. So flashback, you know, life goes on, you know, struggle. You know, you reach a point when things get hard. Yeah, if you look right over this and I wonder, you know. The walk one, yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Yes, I wonder the walk one. So I was basically all heap of strugglings, all heap of fight. I have people and I believe in and I have people who have them more power. You have people who try to bring it down. Cause even in our music, you have people we are you know them kind of people I say, boy, you know I'm gonna wear the now I'm gonna work. But in my mind I always determine and always confident. How did you keep that though? You know say cause you know you have the eight as them out there. But how did you keep the motivation to say, yeah, my have to make it when I this? Hey, I had something running on my DNA now. Because basically, my father, even though a few days, they had to tie up and learn something mm-hmm. and go out. He did determine to say, my find a better life. And then when they well educated, have a subject where you don't want to trade everything, forget that. And he realized, you know, he must make a step. Go firing and go turn around everything and be the man in my family, take care of everybody. So he more successful. Okay. In a theme time. Mm-hmm. So me, me not because me's a Leo, but me just don't give up on nothing at all. We just always fight. Yeah, but drive. Yeah. yeah, to just push and do it. Yeah, and if I hear myself, I kind of fed up and mm-hmm. don't watch it. I just feel like a two minute. The next minute, yeah, I wonder, then you say, no, but I do this. Go on, my God, again, man, I forget what I did say. Because the driving on me, I can't give up, can't stop, can't slow down. I feel always a push. So, we did it, and as I'm saying, I tell you, I work on delivery truck, bring goods to the supermarket, and all of them, so they have been say, things were right. Now we start, you know, family and them look at something, when I tell me I do cement work. So you got in a construction too, man. Yeah. If I just make sure, say, they on the hustle. Yeah, if I just make sure, say, life all right. And we are push, we are push, we are push. And, you know, these are you to all these are pre all these are talk to God no matter what. And if I want sweet, yeah, and if I want biscuit, I always give God thanks. And God just transform my life. I will never dare say yes. I say yes no. Everything just transform, mm-hmm. everything just start good. We accomplish and right. My life just get 
successful and them thing I just want me to know say when your back is against the wall you feel like say you don't have nobody at all and I lost breath of blood. Mm -hmm. God just say, we well, just that watch and see if you're firm, man. God just lift me up. And when he lift me up, I'm going to me achieve and I'm going to see all the visions that I'm going to own and which part of life bring me. I just say, no, we're not going to go back to the music in terms of the each year. Right. But they push me, they want me to give some other talents. So that now, I'm going to go back to the music now. Because mm -hmm. you know, I'm a manager and executive producer. So that drive there and that love there with my half feet and put it back in my head and we know enough for you to deal. Well want the push, well want the help. And bad man look on them. We have some artists and when they boss people want to keep on their wings. You know, we had an artist on in our last season and he had a had something similar to what you just said. He was saying that, you know, like even veteran artists, them not really give the younger artists a push like that. What's your take on that? All right. Um, the answer is a competitive sport and it's a selfish game. We have to understand. So it's like this. It is more of a hype and a clout. Mm -hmm. It's not about really talent and love. Okay. If you notice. Mm -hmm. Most I love guy with bad money. The world know that I did. Mm -hmm. So, it's a dog eat dog game, I just a child. So, perfect example. So, you use a TV host and your hat here look nice. You had the talk I told everybody at all about you. Bill Gates, Trump. Everybody want to have a seat with you, know, because of you, they're at the top of the moment. Right. They say, no, I'm not going to talk about you and I look by look you. They don't want to see you. So, that is just dance all. And it is a business too, so you have to look on it both ways because oh, you look on it too, if Tom then not a business and you have to spend a bag of money with Tom and you know, so you're not going to make no money. Right. You're not going to really want to invest in a Tom. Yeah, you're not going to risk it. Okay. But as young talent, like artists who have come up, mm -hmm. I believe said that is a different case because you don't know where tomorrow might bring. So you can't say you don't know if Tom is going to make money. Uh, if time I boss and if time I'll be successful. I understand when the artist already boss and he wasting time and they didn't want to lead on the year. He want to lead by your energy. Mm -hmm. But when a young talent I come up, give me benefit I do, give me twenty four hours and so I can push and that way I do. So we have um summer should they like the US right now. Mm -hmm. Everybody know about summer. You have iron up, you have one tug life and everybody know fully bad. And we have Shani Q is another female artist. And you know, um, so that's how you get your inspiration because you said earlier that you use that energy that you have for music now to create your brand, your your entertainment company. So it's like your your inspiration that you have now, you're pushing it behind the younger artists that's coming. That's how you get your inspiration to to search for new artists? Definitely, because that's something I love. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the idea, I went. I think January, uh, we had to do some evaluation and we had to check up some things and document my work. Mm -hmm. I look on the paper, as I tell you, I just say love. Mm -hmm. And I really need money. Money will come in if you come. I'm looking up, I look and say, last year, how much millions spent? I mean, I don't know about nothing. I just say love. Some people that say, invest in something else, or that I'm going to do something else, or so. Mm -hmm. Just a love, so we're not really watching money. Okay, I will come back. Music is a long term thing. What are some of the challenges that you have faced so far being a music producer? Well, what I have biggest challenges I'm facing you know, is my record. I'm a big artist, so I'm a well known artist. Now I'm recording. Yeah, music. man. Mm -hmm. And I'm recording everything that I write, everything. They find a positive vibration. So I'm getting a collab with a female artist and I'm summer. So I'm recording everything. When you do the video, and now I do the video, I'll be a excuse. So that's one of my challenges. Mm -hmm. And next challenge I'm get to, I have an artist, somebody take up on my way, and so I try to help him. 
and me I tell you the next thing to one. Sometimes, I don't say managers react away and react away. Enough people don't know the story because my parents stay here protect them and I'm going to help them. And we don't know where some people have in their head when they when them get a manager, they have a manager, but it's like, they just tell themselves, all right, and then if it, if guess where you are done, you call the manager. I asked that I, mm -hmm. if you pipe a yard bus, then I call the manager. And that's how it work. So, I love to help people, you know, because, you know? Yeah. I, I just love my day, so right now. Mm -hmm. So, but I always help. So, something got on, and, you know? I helped him a couple of times. And in the next, something big come up where I need help again in the same situation. I'm telling you, I have all the project I got. We can't deal with that right now. We can't help with it. And it's like envy, bad mind, everything comes in now and start praying me. I understand, start to make some talk and things. So it's a corrupt world. And my daddy always say, same honor, the same honor, the same brothers we have feed. Mm -hmm. Then we end up being a problem in your life. So it's like, same honor, we have feed by it. Right. So, so one of your major challenges, basically, is how people react to to management, that to, to you as a manager. Sometimes, I would not really all they react, you know. It's yeah. All them, all right, all them view life. Okay. Life is a thing where if you get help, you take the help. But some people read it. I just that. Some people know why I just help them, you know. Mm -hmm. Some people why I help them and take over their whole life. The more you say, be the breadwinner, just take over. May I help you so you can be a breadwinner for your mm -hmm. woman, your kids, your family. But you want me to take the job? Yeah, you want me to take care of everybody. And you for me, man, of your yard. Not me. Understand. So, what are some of your memorable moments now? Some highlight, something where really say, yeah, my sister may do something. All right. Um, we have a, a big hit song with, with Javilani, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the same artist and Javilani do kind of, you know. Yeah. So, that was a great success, you know. In Babylon, I got mainstream and him song there, but it's a good song. We do all the, we do all the work with other artists. Um, we can do all, um, a song with Chuck Fender. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because we meet up with Chuck Fender the other day. And we have a... Canadian tour coming up with Fully Bad. So we're not really running into nobody because I hear what I'm now. In this world where I live now, whether you have it or you don't have it, you have, have people who style you. And it's enough mm -hmm. of who, but I see that business love to style people. It's not a hype or a show off thing, but you can, you can, they write your song. And a man, they don't hear your and they feel like he's more and he's better. You have to stand up for your belief. Now. So me tell my team to hear what I'm. We can't vice anybody at all where we can for we want vice because we have the resource and the money can do it. But they say you have to take sleep, man. I work on our artists and bring them to the forefront. Yeah, because me right. realize say, you no know, matter how much money you have, you have half people come for drain their energy and come for, you know, like some styling thing that I deal with. So I'm just hold on for the part there. I'm not giving a big artist my money for vice for my reading. I bring my artist them 100%. Unless maybe it's a shaggy or a Sean Paul, no say. In the next 24 hours, I'm going to start coming up back. But, eh -eh. So, how you nurture your, your artists? Them? Just like what you just said, no, you're going to lamp on them, you're going to groom them. How do you groom them and get them to where you would want them to be? Three things, you know. Loyalty, respect, and understanding. Okay. I we'll try to make sure me and them have an understanding. Mm -hmm. And we try to build a family bond, which is loyalty. We always stay loyal, no matter what circumstance. And respect, we respect each other. And that no means that we don't have our differences. Right. That no means that we don't meet. Mm -hmm. so you don't hear about it. You know, not know about it. And me, probably, I will say, yeah, we have our differences, but you can know. For real, for real. So keep your, you keep your, your artists them close knit and together. Definitely. I understand. So what are some of the criteria them now? As a producer, you know, 
we are look out for a new artist. Suppose a new artist out there now looking now, watching this interview. What is some of the stuff that you will be looking for in that artist to to make you consider signing them to your label? Well, um, the drive. The one that put a smile on your face. So may I talk a force your smile with me you know, and you promise me say you don't have a smile with me. Yeah, definitely. The drive, mm -hmm. the talent, and the love. Okay, if you not love something, you know, make sense, I do it. Okay. As I tell you earlier, mm -hmm. when I check back, when the account and check everything, I'm so my money spent last year. Yeah. If I never love it, I just say, no, uh, different topic, different thing. So, so you, right, so you want somebody who have the same yeah, love and love. energy, you're, like you look for, you look for, say, you remember like a spark that were in yeah. you. Because, what, yeah, what I'm now, I can't buy myself for one year, you know. I don't find the song, you know. If mm -hmm. you don't love it, I'll give up. That's true. It's true. And uh, this and this goes straight across the board with most careers too, you know. Yeah. But yeah. And and you see the moment you get up you give up. But right, and I forget a break through, you know. Mm-hmm. So but me they give up in a life. More than they write this right now. Mm -hmm. Enough time me jolly dead and I see some things and me I reflect and me I look at. The humble, patient. And wait for God. One time, we would just see some eyeliner carrier drive. Like some BMW and some top carrier. Mm -hmm. You know, ambitious. I say, you know, one day, when I know, we have, buy one of that and come like a nut, my friend and drive it. They have to just believe and know what you want. God, we give you what you want. Say that again. Say that again. Because they need to hear that. Yeah, yeah, you need to hear that. That need to be reinforced. True. Say that again, man. You have to believe. Yeah. Come here, say it with you. Because yeah, you have want to believe. It to mm -hmm. And ask God and make God give you what you want. All right. Believe, say ask it. God, and make God give you what yeah. you want. Real talk, though. True. Real talk, though. Real talk, so Danny Boy. Straight, so. Straight. Straight like that, but then by I know we attack, but you just mellow so I'm not in a lie. You just like a mellow, like a mellow conversation. I like it still, but we are going to play a little game. Okay. You ready for the game? Ready. So the rules are: you're going to read one of these questions that's on this paper, mm -hmm. and you have thirty seconds to respond to the question. Okay. All right, all right. So we don't want. Our audience to see what is on the paper, right? So I'm gonna support them like this, so you can just pick up. Look the man, but look like you can read it before you pick it up, man. May I add it too? May I add it for a minute too? Come, you know why you read through it? Just yes. see the paper there. See them there. You will take pick which one you want. Name three Bob Marley songs. Yes, but you're just not going to name them. You're going to sing them. You're going to sing them? Yeah. You can't There's just name classic. them. So. You're a big DJ. Now you would have run the whole of the school them with RJR. So you can't sing. Come. All right, so Bob Marley, one love. Mm-hmm. One love. Come, ready. One up. Let's get together and feel all right. Brap, brap, what again? <laughs> Give me another one. Alright, um. And this side probably may know. Alright, let me see if I can help you. Yeah, no woman, woman no cry. Yeah. What I wonder again. No, no woman no cry. cry. Mm hmm I don't part there alone, remember. <laughs> and I have yeah, one I said. I wanna love you. Yes. If you can ever day. Mm -hmm. All of them. All of them. <laughs> but yes, but we're not stop again. You pick that one, go on again. So I try them off a pick. Me don't know, but me like the game, so I could go on. Then three things your parents used to tell you to scare you as a child. Mm hmm. Oh, I will try to tell me about a dopey. Real Jamaican stop me that yeah. dopey. Mm -hmm. Dopey story. True. And the last one, we just got to do it because the producer just did it. I said, go on, do it, do it, do it. I said, she stay. So, name three things that remind you of your childhood. Personality. Remind you of your childhood? What? What about your personality? Calm. 
So I said, it's still from your little? I said, it just calm? Not all the time. What else reminds you of your childhood? Fun. What, what we used to do for fun? Everything. I have is that all over the place are fun. Mm-hmm. And, and one. It's still nominal. That's why I pick this cards. Music bring it everywhere. See you. See you more, sir. Give me another one. Another one. Mm hmm. Um, love. Okay. So you, did, you was a loving child? Until now. So you know, okay. So you're a loving man. Mm -hmm. You hear that, ladies? Then I love the Bible talk about. Beer love. Beer and love. Mr. A, hey, yeah, but me I love you know, because too you just a talk about God. So you say to me love God. True. And from your mention him, you just a talk and just a big amount of straight. And me can invite you a church to one oh, of them okay. there. Yeah. Adventist going on. Well me not go Adventist, me a Sunday worshipper, but it not really matter. A God you say? What you say? God me say. And me say oh. God me say. So okay. a one God. One God. One God. Alright, done boy. But I like that game there. That game there really go on with itself. True. Dan Boy, you know what? May I go back to where you say you grew up in Spanish town. And for a young man to grow up in Spanish town to be so positive, how, how that came about? Well, as I said before, mm -hmm. when you have God, you have everything, don't it? So basically, we grew up in a church. and Spanish town is not an easy road. Everybody know that too. Mm -hmm. So you set your mind and, and determine, say, you want something out of life. Determine, say, and I really want to go down a certain road. It can't work for you. Temptation, I'm not dead here, you know. You know, because mm -hmm. that's just life. The devil and all this trying to tempt you. But you have to just know where you want, believe in where you want, and just trust that. So just that basically I'm do. Because Spanish is a place where at any time, Anything at all can help me, I just use some help me. Any card but, can play. Any card can play. Mm -hmm. so. For you believe no God, you don't have to worry, you don't have to fret. So, I care what I go in a Spanish town, I care how a place I lift up and what I go in. We just always, we don't say we're not scared, but we just always have God now. So, because if you follow your fear, you don't have to sleep, you know. You don't have to mm -hmm. fret. So, we just know, say, yeah, what I'm now. God now, I'm not there, you know. God love you. So go on your bed, man, or if one Straight like yeah. that. True. See him where you say like that. Mm. See him where God are God. Straight. Listen, man, I love the interview so far. I mm. love what you talk where you're going with. But we're going to dive back into your business aspect. Mm. Marketing of your, of your brand. Because your brand is going places, you know. Definitely. How do you structure it and market your brand? Well, team power, team strength. As I'm saying, mm -hmm. as a team, I me alone can do it. Me I just the head, but me alone can do it. I have the end of build the rhythm. Me understand, mm -hmm. you have know, family, our responses, social media, marketing, and stuff like that. You have rush him and make sure it's not and not go on. He make sure set when business to deal with the deal with the right and proper way, like studio and certain little things. And um, you have the artist them where. For them job after just produce music mm -hmm. and I stand and all is ready for your show. So the team structure and as I may say, so my time, one problem we have done. So my time we late for certain things or certain places we go. But the friendly team hundred percent. Our family. Cause most of the pan team are family and friend are one and we all have come from one place so we know mm -hmm. one. So that we use and push it in the music. We have a timeline when we have a drop a song. We have a timeline when artists go to the studio. So we just basically have a whole little strategy. We don't really try to copy our, you know, right. take nobody's style and all like that. We just observe and just let our own thing out. As a um, music producer, how do you navigate through the ever-changing landscape of music, particularly like the streaming platform and distribution, stuff like that. How do you navigate it? All right, so basically, you know, back then, usually, I have to just work with, like, the Billboard. Mm -hmm. I have to work with, like, the Grammys. Right. I have to work with, like, um, usually, I have to TVG again. 
You Top know? 10 and them stuff yeah. there, right. But mm-hmm. now, mm-hmm. technology is so advanced and creative where we have the Spotify, you have Adia Mac, you have Tidal, mm-hmm. and you have other platforms out there like the TikTok where you put up something that's gone viral. Right. So we just use all of them um, platforms there mm-hmm. and perform with music, you know, promote with music, perform, and just make it work. But it all come back down to your fans. If you find them, accept you. Them are them that love you. Are them that like your music it's ten times harder. So in music, whether your song good or your song bad, the fans them have to accept you. The fans them, bad, right. The fans. So that is why you have to just love your fan base. And if I have one person that support you, love that person. Because that one person can make a hundred person like you. So I have to love that person. So that's how you do your navigation. You know what I want to find out from you? As I say, you're very positive and you, you, you have your mind set and your goal and ready to go. What set your record label apart from the others out there? Right. My record label is different because we are here for the artists that we're not now look at. We are here for telling them when nobody know uh, give even 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. So not change entertainment is just basically the new big thing in a dancer right now. We are rise up stars from the ground straight to the top. Mm-hmm. You notice you have other labels, you have other entity. Right. They have other big names out there. Mm-hmm. You understand? You have to probably have three hits and or four. For them evil, take the time out for look for you. No know, change, don't do that. No matter whether they're big or whether they're small. I understand. Right. From what you say, they can contribute and we can help you go further. That is it. But we mostly look at young talent. If you notice, right. all our talent, them, them fresh. Yeah. Only fully bad really have a name out there already. Mm-hmm. So not all the time. But otherwise, some that fresh talent. Groom them, nourish them, and bring them to the forefront. That's what a manager should do. Mm-hmm. I mean, now in a dance hall, they might cheat the game for tell the truth. You understand? It's like you want somebody to cook a chicken field and share it out and bring it, come and then they eat. No. You have to catch a chicken like mm cook. Mm-hmm. Make sure say, you pluck him right way. Make sure you put him by the fridge. And then you make sure say, you see his name up and then you cook him. Mm-hmm. So that now change the air for do. Bring it from scratch to top. So that's how you nurture your your um your artists. Other than um yeah, you have their music and you release their songs. Mm-hmm. Other than that, what else have you impact in them? What is it that you're putting in them? Alright. My artists them now. As I was saying, we live like family. Mm-hmm. So I always try to tell them and give them the best advice. So I make them learn the business, not just vice and record. Right. They must learn the business for themselves. They must know where they can collect all of their royalties. They must know how the streaming database works. They must know um, the percentage where they're supposed to get half a song. They must know the basic because music is mostly it's 90% business and 10% talent. You know? mm-hmm. So many a time you have some artists where some manager of them. Them not get robbed in them just not understand the business. So I make sure I table out everything with my artist them. Say I mean spend ten million dollar. Mm-hmm. Just know say when you boss, before you even get one dollar, I have to get back a ten million dollar because it's like a loan. It's an investment. Right. Enough manager don't tell them artists them something here, so and the artist bust now them and the artist then a problem. Because the artist I say, hey, I make ten million dollar for that show yet, and when I get a dollar. You have to read the contract, make them understand, mm-hmm. teach them a game because I end the idea. And you talk about bad you know? It's easy for somebody to look for your bad than look for your good. I know I'm right. Straight talking. So you have to make certain sense because you have enough artists and grateful as well. Make certain sense. You table it out and tell them, say, I agree. And just like when you got a bank in right. the agreement, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. You get $15 million to buy a house. After, after a period of time, I start paying back X amount. I can't go to the bank. 
why you want vex with that manager. Good point with your with the bank. But as a music producer, how does Jamaica Music Society comes in for you? Alright, good question. Well mother so right you now is I have to beat the culture. Mm-hmm. Because I still it's still a learning process. But Jamaica is behind time with certain things. Because evil with their royalties and all of them so. Right. If you tell the truth, ask any engineer, ask any artist or any manager. You have to sign up with some system where they overseas and then make sense, all right, them look out for you. They make sense, this is my Arabia, this is my take more than we forget. Jamaica, if you set up a system like that, I think instead of have people and make a fool of themselves on certain platform. And to take the time out and build some platform where the artists then can be more vulnerable. Because we don't have that. We don't have anything we can say here. Yeah. Um, this are the thing in Jamaica where I stand up for the artists then. No. So you don't think Jams is doing that, the Jamaica Music Society? You don't think they are they are fulfilling their role in that way? I do not them do what they're supposed to do. But at the end of the day, it is like this. When me and you the right here, so right? Mm -hmm. And two bottles of water upon the table. You drink some, and me drink half mine. Remember, you drink some, you know? Mm -hmm. Though you drink, half, you drink some, is a good thing, though. Yeah. And me drink half mine, what that's what you say. So you drink fears? Mm -hmm. So you drink half mine? Yeah, fears. why I drink half mine? Because it's good. Mm -hmm. I would say that because it's good. That's why and, you and, want more. That's why you drink it all. Right. And not all the good it could. Yeah. Uh, what is it? Uh, what is the, 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 the phrase now that? What is the phrase? The phrase now it is because the water is good. Mm -hmm. I me don't wait. I drink off everything. Water. Okay. So, so mm -hmm. like, like that name we call a while ago, mm -hmm. people got there, but not everybody why. That's what. That's the reason why I'm asking this question because I hear this it name is, coming up a lot. It is good, but mm -hmm. it's not the best. Okay, so there's work needs. You think what work needs. work needs to be done? Yeah. Think work needs to be it done. Helping, it help you, but mother said don't be there. You see the BMI and the Sanchez and all of them places. Mm -hmm. People gravitate to it more because you know, say, you know, you not have to worry yourself. Your money is safe. Your money, your right, right. So, so basically, we, we want to see jams growing yeah. to that kind of level. Yeah. The, the overseas entities, them. Definitely. You want to see jam looking Yeah, don't just, like that. Don't just uh, make people sign up for them and, you know, so they have something to get and thing. Be more accurate. Be more, you know? Mm, out yeah, there. Out there. What are you saying? You want them to be more open or... Be all right. But more of them for those be a household. Like how you that have Def Jam. Def Jam not just um, in a one category alone, you know. Mm -hmm. They make sense to them go out and make sense to them recruiting people but deal with different, different sections. Okay. If you also go at Jam Pro, just one thing and then the matter is to go one other part or go over the stuff. You want a database to have everything in a Jamaica. Okay, so okay. Music. You don't want just... Write this and then you have to call them overseas and say, but all me can sign up with for all of this great stuff. I'm not talking about Jamaica, I have that. The things scatter all about. Okay. So it's more organized then. Yeah, you want it more. Organized. Okay. I get your point. I get your point. Dan Boy, this interview has been a very eye opening one. Definitely. And it showed me a different side of you. And I think my viewers too will see a different side of you. you see, how calm and collective you are and how positive you are with with your life and your incorporation of God in all that you do. Definitely. So as a music producer, what would you tell a new upcoming artist wanting to enter into music? What advice would you give them? All right. So the first two things is they have to, they have to learn for prayer. Make sure you can pray. I make sense here, they look fasting. I have a seven day fasting or a three day fasting. That is very important because you live in a spiritual world and it's not everybody will laugh with you like you. So you have to always pray and keep God close. So that are two things. Next thing, you have to believe in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, nobody is not going to believe in you. 
And then the next thing we have to do, make certain say surround yourself with people that want what you want. Because if you want something and throw your bridging around and want badness and the music you want, there's no say that trouble. So I surround myself with people I deal with music. Music may deal with. Right. And then next thing too, always put God first. And love yourself because if you don't love yourself, nobody now will love you. I care how pretty a girl might be. I care how the world might look. Love yourself. Because I end the idea. As soon as you say I love yourself, make sure I love you. So Mr. Foster, that interview was an eye-opening one. It was motivating and it was enlightening. Thank you very much for making it real talk, Jamaica. Appreciate it. Guys, I know you enjoyed that interview as much as I did. Join us every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. And remember to like, share, and subscribe. Guys, this is Real Talk Jamaica. Adios.